I know exactly what you're thinking. You clicked on this video thing that it's going to be super easy and then the person starts editing and then they start bringing out paid plugins and then they're doing these crazy things that no one has ever seen in Photoshop and then it's hard to follow along and they have 82 layers and you lose track and you have no idea what's going on. That's not this video. I am going to baby mode show you how to edit a portrait in Capture One to make it look as incredible as possible. Let's go. Step one. Take an actually decent photo. Listen, no amount of polishing is gonna make a turd into a piece of gold. You have gotta take a good photo, it's gotta be in focus, the lighting has gotta be good. Editing can save a lot of mistakes, but it's not gonna make the photo. Step two, get it into Capture One. Here's Capture One and here's the photo we're gonna be editing today. This is the after and this is the before. I'm gonna show you how to take this photo and turn it into this with editing. So to start off, I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna click New Variant so we start completely from scratch. Now on the left side of Capture One, let's click Adjust. First thing that we wanna do is adjust the white balance. Since this is a portrait, I like to go a little warmer. So I'm gonna pull this white balance up to just look at it visually and see what's working. I feel somewhere around 6200 is good. Of course, adjust the taste. The tint on these photos is a little towards the greener side. I wanna go with a five magenta, which is gonna take away that greenness from the face. This is the before and this is the after. It just matches Whitney, the model's skin color best. Now we wanna adjust the exposure. We can do this just with our eyes, but also every monitor is different. So you're gonna wanna look at the histogram as you're adjusting the exposure. And as I pull this up, the histogram looks pretty evened out at around 0.71 to 0.8, somewhere around there. So I'm gonna go with 0.75 for this example. Next up, the high dynamic range. As you can see, there's a lot of highlights going on in her face and the Sony files, clean up the highlights very nice along with capture one has excellent highlight recovery so for this photo it looks like highlights all the way down to zero is going to work the best because you can still see the highlights happening on her face but we don't get any more of that whiteness going on next i'm going to click on the auto levels which is going to bring down the darks a little bit and brighten up the highlights a little bit just to give it that little boost of contrast this is the before and this is the after and that's all we got to do to get the correct exposure and light for the photo step two getting the skin tones right on the left side scroll all the way down until you see the color editor click on this little eyedropper tool and that's going to give you the ability to click on a part of the photo and you'll be able to move your mouse up down left and right to adjust the color that you clicked on so i'm going to click on her cheek and then i'm going to push up to bring up the skin color warmth the redness in her face and now we're just going to adjust this to taste i don't want to go too overboard and something like 32 ish is kind of looking correct to me so that's where i'm going to leave it right now so this is the before and this is the after. Look at how much warmth we brought to her face without affecting any of the other colors in the image. That's what makes this super powerful and cool. Now we actually start the editing. Let's scroll all the way up until we're in the layers area on the capture one over here on the left side. We're gonna click the plus icon to create a new layer. And that first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do this thing called 20 sharp, where we are going to selectively sharpen the points of the face where people are gonna be looking the most. And that is typically the eyes, the eyebrow, the nose sometimes, and the mouth. Now that we have the layer named correctly, we're gonna to go to the top toolbar and we're gonna click on the brush tool. And this is gonna give us our brush. Now, hold down the control key and zoom in to around the main parts of the face. With the brush tool selected, we can right click anywhere on the screen and we can adjust its settings. Let's adjust the brush size until it's roughly about the size of her eyes like this. And right click again and make sure the hardness is down to zero, past Santa Fe or maxed out. Now click and hold and paint over the eyes area. So this is her right eye and this is her left eye. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just the main areas. Now we're gonna adjust the brush size by using left bracket key and we're gonna make it roughly the same size as her eyebrow right here, left eyebrow, then right eyebrow, click and hold and paint over. And then we're gonna do her lips down here. So click and hold and just go over the lips area because the hardness is pretty low. It's okay if you get a touch close to the edges, but if you do make any mistakes, then you can press the E key and you are able to erase the mask to just make it look clean and good. Now that we have masked the proper areas for the 20 sharpness, we're gonna apply the effect. So we're gonna put the contrast up to 20. We're gonna scroll down to the clarity sliders and we're gonna put clarity to 20 
and we're gonna put structure to 20. That's why it's called 20 sharp. But I'm gonna scroll out now. Just by the looks of it, it looks like the contrast is just a little too strong. So I'm gonna bring this down to taste and just looking at this image, it seems like somewhere around six is looking good. You don't want it to look too crazy. My style of editing is all about little sprinkles here and there. You don't want it to be the main event. You just wanna sprinkle in the goodness. Next up, we're going to do the eyes. Within the layers area, click the plus button and name this eyes and we are going to bring life to the eyes by increasing exposure, bringing up the shadows and putting a touch of clarity and structure into there. Click the brush tool and you're going to make the brush a touch smaller here. We're gonna brush right over the iris and the pupil right here. So just like that, roughly, because the hardness is a little low, it's okay if you go a touch over, it doesn't have to be extremely precise. But if you make a mistake, click the eraser tool and erase the parts where you made the mistake. Now that we've masked her eyes, let's go ahead and bring up the shadows. And this is just by looking at it and by taste. I think something around 51 is good. Then we're gonna scroll down to the clarity. And I like to pump this up a good bit because then it's gonna show that depth in the eyes. And the structure, you don't wanna put too much because then it'll look too over sharpened, quote unquote. So some around 15 looks good. Now, finally, this is where I like to go to the exposure and this is where the brightness comes in. So you increase it until you see those beautiful eyes. Fun fact about this model, Whitney, I didn't even know that she had these deep green eyes that are so incredible until I was actually editing photos of her. So as you can see, if you increase it too much, they're gonna look alien and they're gonna look crazy and it's gonna look weird. So you don't wanna go too overboard with this. Somewhere around 0.71 is working for me. But another thing you wanna do is you're gonna wanna scroll out and then de-click the layer and then look at it again. That's a really good way to see if you overdid something. So it still looks a little bit overdone. So I'm gonna bring down the exposure to around 0.4. And for me, that is really working for this image. Again, adjust to taste, but the idea is to bring the depth to the eyes. So that's what this eyes layer has done. Look at the before and then look at the after. It's retaining the same color, which I feel is really important. That's why I don't touch saturation, but it just brings life to those eyes so people can look into them and say, wow, this is beautiful. Next up, I like to decrease the bags under the eyes. Depending on your lighting and depending on the person, some people have really strong bags on their eyes, some of them have really weak ones. As you can see with Whitney here, she barely has any at all. So let me just show you how to do it so you know how to do it for your images. Let's click the plus button and change the name of it to bags under eyes. And then let's go to the brush tool and we are going to increase the size of the brush with the left and right bracket. And then we're gonna brush just under the eyes where you see a touch of darkness and a little bit up above the eyes too. You can see a little bit of the bags under the eyes effect. So just brushing under these areas. Now we're gonna scroll down on the left side and we're gonna decrease the clarity. Now don't overdo this because it's gonna look weird if it looks really smooth under the area and the rest of her face is sharp. So somewhere around negative 50 is looking good for me. This is the before and this is the after. The effect is really subtle. Now next, you're gonna adjust the shadow parameter. So I'm gonna just pull up the shadow area and that's what's gonna bring the brightness to it. Now don't overdo this because it's gonna look a little weird if it looks too bright. So somewhere around 48 is looking good for me. So this is the before and the after. And if we're zoomed out, the before and the after. You can see it's such a subtle effect because Whitney barely has any bags under her eyes. It just brings the focus to the eyes rather than the bags under the eyes. Next up is the final step. Yes, the final step. I make this baby easy. I'm not over here with 82 layers, okay? We are gonna bring life to the hair. So the hair is looking incredible. As you can see on the top left, I did have a hair light. It's just bringing out the color in her hair, but we wanna bring out the rest of her hair. So let's go ahead and click plus on the layers and we're gonna name this hair. Now with the brush tool selected, we're gonna increase it with the right bracket key until it's pretty big and we are going to brush over all of her hair. So try to get it close to the edge, but don't paint right up to the edge. And then with small strands of hair that go down over other areas, you don't really need to paint those areas because when we increase the shadows, it's going to look weird. So just stick to the main parts of the hair. So I am just brushing over now the top side of her hair over here. While you're holding the bun down, you can actually adjust the size as you're painting. So you don't have to let go of the left click while you're doing this. So adjust it to get around certain areas, increase it, decrease it to speed up the time and the process. So you, you 
you can see here that I went over these areas, but I'm not gonna go over these little strands over here, and I'm gonna show you why, once we start bringing the hair out, why that's not a good idea. So just painting over, as you can see on this side, I'm just gonna switch to the eraser and erase that part and just brush, 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 brush. Have fun brushing, yes. <laughs> so now the main areas of her hair are brushed and we have them selected as a mask. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna scroll down to the high dynamic range. We're gonna increase the shadows and that's just gonna bring life to the hair. Now, don't overdo it. Again, sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. So to me, somewhere around 14 is looking good. So this is the before and this is the after. We're just bringing that life to the hair. But because we brought the shadows up alone, what's gonna happen is the contrast has decreased, we can see. So I'm gonna increase the contrast just a touch. Contrast is so powerful in Capture One, it's crazy. So just a five. So this is the before and the after. So we brought the shadows up, but we increased the contrast just a touch. Now, finally, we're gonna bring the color back into her hair. We're gonna use the saturation slider to do this. So I'm gonna pull up and somewhere around 10 to 15 is looking good to me. If you go too hard, it's just gonna look too colorful and weird and unnatural. So again, sprinkles. So somewhere around 12 is looking good for me. It just accentuates the blonde streaks in her hair. And this is the before and this is the after. Just bringing life to the hair. And that's it. That is the full edit. This is the before and this is the after. That's the magic of editing. Before was still a great photo, good starting point, but we're just bringing it to life with a touch of editing. And that is my baby mode, easy portrait editing for Capture One. If you loved this tutorial and you found it useful, go ahead and click like, comment, let me know if I can improve it in any way, or you think you have a better method, or you think that I did a good job, let me know. And if you'd like to see the photo shoot and how I took this photo, I did a whole POV behind the scenes video with Whitney and she's just a blast to work with. Took a ton of photos. You can check that video out next and have fun and be entertained by my content. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned a lot.